I got you You got me We are two Too lucky Emily, your name spells home Since the day you were born You have always known When I need you the most Good day, this is Br'er Caleb, PhD And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger A post hole digger that continues to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Let's get started. Oh, 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 my best friend got sent my own blue fortune. You know you are my double flame whisper, my soulmate. Just as happy Remember when you were fine Every day by my side Today we will be dealing with Christianity Oxymoron Exposed What does that mean? And why those grim terms? Some of us are not familiar or not comfortable with the term oxymoron Oxymoron is basically a contradiction, and it can be confusing, though it is a figure of speech pairing two words together that are opposing and contradictory. Christianity, oxymoron, exposed. And why is that? As I said yesterday, I was very intrigued and actually annoyed with the persistent attitude of the body of Christ. The majority of them seem to support a president that has under all understanding done whatever he could. He lied, he cheated to become the president. I can go back to some of my earlier videos that tells you and explains, which has been explained in the news as well and by various other institutions, how he basically cheated him into the White House, as he got into the White House, how he acted, berated people that were opposing him, he just made them morons, looked like morons or whatever. And yet the Christian support that he has was not because of sentiment, it was because of arrangements. And here we go, oh yeah, we prayed with him. And this is where my central thought is. I got nothing to say about President Trump. He is not my president. And I do care because a lot of my brothers and sisters, people that I know, live in the States or Canada and are affected directly by his inaction. His only action seems to be hamburgers and golf. But he's done a few things. And one of the things, and this is the most and that is why it is so concerning, Christianity oxymoron exposed. I wanted to talk about Christianity exposed, but it is an oxymoron because they claim to be the body of Christ. They claim to be the followers of Yeshua, Hamasia, which they titled eventually the Greek title, Jesus Christ. And most of us say, well, what is the big deal? Well, when Jesus commanded those who would be called his followers, those people that were following him on the way, the truth and the light, he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And that is in Matthew 5, verse 16. And to accomplish this, one has to live so the light of God manifests in their life. Now, it is actually it's not what I say, it's what I do. 
I myself have made an awful lot of mistakes. I am 70 years of age. So I'm not talking about who is good and who is bad. But I tell you one thing that is extremely important. Having been in court from 1997 till 2015, of which I had um, several lawyers, a whole bunch of dream teams supposedly dealing with an issue that was technically immaterial. The principle was I had put down a request or a proposal from a friend of mine who happens to be the head of the Freemasons. That is the real essence. The head of the Freemasons was so annoyed with me that he said, you will see the power I have. Technically, I was supposed to know it because I'm trained in seminary, Bible school and all that kind of stuff. I went to school. I, I spoke for 12 years as an evangelist. Technically, I was supposed to know. So because of my ignorance pertaining to this subject, I kind of smiled and shrugged it off and say, so big deal. Now I come to the understanding after being in court for 15 years and being sentenced for six years to maximum security that there was no fun in doing that. Fighting a fight that was basically not necessary if I would have known in advance. But what it did do for me was it opened my eyes. You see, I studied law before in Holland. It was insurance law, international law. But when you have to deal with the fact that you can be sentenced for five, six, 10 or 20 years or life, that is a whole different ballpark. You get confronted with issues and your belief system. And you say, wait a minute, that is not correct. That is not correct. And as I was forced to face the reality of why I believe what I believe, well, I went to school, I got degrees, I learned this and this and this and this, but in court, in face of the problems, oops, it was different. And that made me think and understand that what we are doing today is extremely important. So we are talking about Christianity oxymoron exposed. On the surface, I say, it appears to be an oxymoron. It asserts that the more the church embraces the customs, traditions, and beliefs that are non-biblical and even pagan and heathen, the word of God presented to the multitudes, the easier it is for the Lord to guide the true disciples into the light. For some, the term oxymoron can be confusing, though it is a figure of speech pairing two words together that are opposing and contradicting. In other words, Christianity should not be a moron. Because we fail to understand the reason and essence of life itself, it is nearly impossible for modern Christianity to understand the nature of the ancient religions and their relationship to the new covenant teachings. Now, we have an understanding that we're talking about Yeshua, or for most, they know him as Jesus. He came and he taught certain things. But why did he come? He came here because he needed to restore restorative justice between God and mankind. See, when God creates something, it is forever. We have seen the world started spinning and with all the technology, with all the, our knowledge, with everything we are capable of doing, and we have everything now locked up in the cloud, we can't figure out God. So there is an aspect that the beauty of his holiness is not something you can search with a computer because we were supposed to be made whole. That was the sickness that God was talking about or Yeshua was talking about. He was the first that understood that. He came as a man, he was a man, and he recognized the spiritual aspect. So he restored the relationship between God Almighty and us, humanity. Now he left a way, and God called it the way, the truth, and the light. So what we became, we became Christians, 
And most people have just accepted it because Opa of Mama and Papa, Opa and Over Opa and blah, blah, blah. They're all Christians. They fought for their life. They fled to North America, so to America, in order to live a free life. But is that correct? And that is the question we pose. Because when I was in court, I realized that even if you mean well, because you were taught certain things, if you are wrong, if evidence cannot prove that, you are still guilty. And that is the problem we have with Christianity. Christianity sounds like an oxymoron. Some of us say, well, we got a moron in the White House. But let's stick to the oxymoron. If that oxymoron is that is a contrasting issue, then we can be able to put it together and maybe sort it out and say, oh, now that I understand, I can fix that problem. See, most of the Christians, and that is how it is developed, we have an inability to handle the considerable basic meanings of religion itself. Why is that? Well, if you're in a Protestant church, well, my pastor told me, blah, 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 blah. And it's always the guy in charge. But Christianity was never supposed to be Christianity. They were supposed to be the followers of the way. And so they are readily hold in the arms of pagan religious symbols, accepting, accepted by the first four centuries, actually from the fourth century century on and people say yeah but i always had my cross i always said my hail mary i always did but why do you do that and that is the big question folks see if we extract those words regarding the pagan religions symbols and the inner meanings we start understanding the universal truth see all religions have something somewhere somehow something positive they're teaching of the two ways uh, the Tao say the way, uh, the Buddhist, the Muslims, they all speak the truth in basic understanding if we take the time to understand. But to the disciple with the intrepid heart, that means he has a brave heart. I like to call the brave heart an intrepid heart, who with his whole life seeks the truth, the inner spiritual meaning the exposure of it. Who are the majority? Whose lives are driven by sexual needs and brutal carnal cravings? They are different. The wise men of all times have provided religious symbols that entice the masses and yet conceal the true spiritual meaning from the eyes of the profane. Folks, it's only the wise that will see and understand. After they martyred Paul and Peter in Rome, Clement became a leader bishop of the church there. And in Clement's words, the reality of humanity is showed when he wrote it in a, an above quotation, uh, actually underneath. But the multitudes crammed themselves like brutes, measuring happiness by the belly and the pudenda and the basis things in us. It is correct when written and right of the people in their own time. The multitude of people does not care about the truth. They have no desire to embrace the pure word. Being carnal, they relate everything to fulfilling their sensual desires and appetites. Knowing this, the holy men of, in this world of, have embedded the way, the teachings, into whatever form the multitude of people would accept. In other words, they are sharing stuff with the normal populace. People that have come and listen and hear and they say, oh yeah, yeah that's, uh, as long as they can fill the belly, as long as they have all the sex they can get, and if you don't do that, you know, do the lifestyle you want to have anyway. And then figure that out and make a nice sandwich and present that as something like Christianity. Now, the Apostle Paul said, 
The especially important knowledge is beyond our comprehension today because we are ignorant of the words. When we worship the historical Yeshua while giving little attention to the marriage with the indwelling Christ. In other words, when Yeshua was sent, when Jesus was sent here to this world, he came, he fulfilled the law of God. Awesome. So what did we do? We did something very funny. We just bought everything that was given to us and we didn't even pay attention. Isn't it terrible? So when we study Paul's actual teachings rather than what most churches interpret what he supposedly said, Christians focus severely shifted from the original intent and purpose. Because of the facts, though we claim to believe in the apostles' doctrine of faith, we concluded that the modern church position directly opposes what Paul taught was necessary for one even to be counted as a believer. In other words, we believe contrary to what Paul taught. Paul said, this is the minimum that you need to do. And what do we do as Christians? Oh, just say, praise the Lord and say you believe. And then, excuse me, where did Paul ever say that? Well, when we ignore the Bible and disregard the essential teachings of the way, we summarize the modern day church perspective as follows. No matter what proofs offered, the church will continue to hold fast to the present system of beliefs without regards to the historical and biblical evidence that would demonstrate their position's defectiveness. In other words, if Yeshua would walk in your church today, or Paul or Peter, would they stay? What would they say? Are they wondering what all the profanity means? Pagan gods? And you say, what? You see, Zeus, Z-E-U-S, and Jesus, you should be looking this up for yourself and check out what in the world is that with Jesus and Mother Mary. Those were things that were invented way before Jesus even showed up. But in 325, they were all amalgamated, they were all put together to make faith a lot easier for the efforts taken. So if you feel like you're a special person because you talk holy, well, the holy talk should be compared, and that's why we talk about Christianity oxymoron exposed, that why is the church propagating certain things that are contrary to what God says? God says there is one God, and we pray to three gods. Many sincere Christians today believe that if the church changed from its original course, and both our Bibles and beliefs are no longer pure and approved by God, God would move upon the believer's heart and change them. Mostly, this is the same mindset adopted by the transsexuals. God made me this way. If he wanted me to be different, he would change me. And he loves me just the way I am. This is the position of the church. And I know I might be stepping on a lot of toes. The great truth that the modern church did not come to terms with God permits and even ordains the errors and inconsistencies in Christian doctrine today for humanity's higher good. That God would allow the modern church to dwell in error and incompetence merely is beyond the modern day's believer's comprehension. The result is that we ignore the Bible, we disregard the essential teachings of the way the modern day church viewpoint summarized that no matter what proofs offered, the church will continue to hold fast to its present system of beliefs without regards to the historical and biblical evidence that would demonstrate the position's defectiveness. So what I'm saying in some rather lengthy sentences is simply this. Christianity... Oh, it's a terrible thing to say again. 
I try to keep it nice, but the reality is nice is not always possible because we are dealing with something that is so evil that we have Christianity oxymorons. We are putting a guy in the White House that lies, that cheats, that steals, fills his pockets. And you say, well, where is the proof, folks? If you have so many lawsuits that you are afraid to show your tax uh, department what your taxes were all about because you write off all the payments you made because of sexual immorality and stuff that you had to settle, and now you are praise the Lord because I let those idiots pray with me. Now they think I'm a Christian. Folks, it is your action that speaks louder than your word. If you cannot speak, but you act in love, God's love, that has an impact. While I'm talking about this, I don't like saying this, but I have to say it for your sake because it took me seven decades to figure this out. I always had the question, why? What is this all about? How come I feel like this? The thinking of the disciples were totally opposite of what we are doing in our day-to-day -day Christianity living. It may be an oxymoron. However, the most or the more the church embraces the customs the traditions and the beliefs that are non-biblical, even pagan and heathens, the word of God presented to the multitude and then easier it is for the Lord to guide the true disciples. So I'm not spitting on what is being taught because it is at least you are familiar with something. It is almost like when I had my property, I had weed growing up. But among the wheat, there was something sometimes that was just so beautiful. And so God will use, he said, even a stone he can lift up and, and have them preach the gospel. So I'm not spitting on what is being taught. I am only sharing with you folks. If you want to have a rich, successful life, follow the way. When I say rich, successful means that you truly experience the love of God and the walk of God. Being successful means successful in the eyes of God. Not per se your own success, but quite often it goes hand in hand. So why? The church was so corrupt in the days of uh, our friend Martin Luther. He wrote a letter to the chief, the Pope. And when he wrote, he said, the church was so corrupt that it was easy for the spiritual Christians to demonstrate the church counterfeit. In Martin Luther's letter to the Pope, we see the condition of his church. Christianity, he says, once the holiest of all became the most licentious den of thieves and the most shameless of all brothels, the kingdom of sin and death and hell and it's so sad that even the Antichrist himself, if he should come, could think of nothing to add to its wickedness. Now, this is quoted in the Great Thoughts compiled by George Saldus. You can find that in the uh, Amazon. Had the church been pure and undefiled, it would have no place among the heathen and pagan people. But the church reflects the thinking and the lifestyle of the meaning also means that it provided individuals to embrace the gospel. We should better understand this astounding truth if we were able for a moment to open our minds to men's higher reality. Move beyond our classy diamondist perception of life and recognize that when the religious symbolism presented to a soul who has developed under these symbols in the past. You know, it is scary to see what we as Christians have become. And therefore my question is, are you satisfied with the lifestyle that you have? We fail to understand this concept that is expressed by one of the most orthodox authorities of the post nicene church today because we cannot comprehend the pre-existing soul's relationship. Our relationship was created to be with God. God created us PMS, that is physical, mental, and spiritual. But when Adam and Eve sided with Satan, 
they were automatically cut off because they were already created. They were there physically. They were communicating with God. They talked to the snake so they could mentally do something there that they could comprehend what they were doing. But spiritually they were cut off. And that is why Jesua came, Jesus came to this world to open the door, to open that path, that restorative justice would take place so that we could become whole again. That was the disease. And we say, oh yes, but I'm hurting here and I'm hurting there and I'm the pandemic. Those are all results of being incomplete. But if our spirit comes back to full realization and we are complete because we are following the way, the truth and the light, we will be able to deal with the pandemic. Because once the spirit gets complete, we are more than overcomer. See, and that is the power. So helping you by being harsh in love, Christianity exposed as much as it sounds like an oxymoron, folks, we are not whole. And if we are not whole, we are sick in the terminology of Jesua HaMashiach, Jesus to you. And so therefore, if you want to get healed, come to the Lord. He said, knock on that door and I will open. And remember, folks, tough times never last. Tough people do. You knock on that door, and God will open. That is His promise. But do it while you still can. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye for now.